Hi, I'm Lisa Gar, host of The Aware Show. When your inner ecosystem is out of balance, Candida has the opportunity to rapidly grow and take over its environment, ultimately causing a leaky gut syndrome. Joining me is Donna Gates, founder of the Body Ecology System of Health and Healing. She is best-selling author of The Body Ecology Diet, used by hundreds of thousands of people around the world for the past 25 years. Now, Donna, you've had first-hand experience with Candida, haven't you? Definitely. I think that's really what was wrong with me, uh, maybe from the beginning of my life. And that's why you started this whole system. Well, it kind of led to it, right? Yeah. Well, I started just finding answers, what was wrong. But when I met Dr. William Crook, and he had just written the book, The Yeast Connection, uh, then I had a name for it. I had an understanding of this is what's wrong with me. But finding out how to fix the problem was a, quite a journey. Okay, so how would someone know if they had candida? What systems does it affect in the body? It affects every single system, so the symptoms are all over the place. If you are a woman, you can have um, hormone imbalances and your skin will break out and you can be moody and depressed and have cravings for sugar uh, because of your, the hormone imbalances. Of course, men can have candidiasis just as well as is okay. the same problem. Uh, babies have thrush and cradle cap oh. and they have diaper rash that you know constantly and they have uh, they have digestive problems like colitis constipation diarrhea they're born with it usually uh, this is babies come out of the womb with yeast actually because when a woman becomes pregnant her um, everything goes up like her progesterone her glucose those are all good things her all estrogen hormones. goes up mm -hmm. they need to go up but in doing so they feed the yeast. And so she has a yeast infection in her body. Mm. It will become more acute. She'll pass that on to her baby. One of the things I've been trying to do for years is let enough mothers know that when their baby is born, they will be born with a yeast infection. And so you want to throw it off in the first month or two of life and then get, you know, be done with it, basically. Amazing that you can actually do that with the baby. You could actually help. You can. You can immediately. Because they have a strong, they can, if you build their immune system, they have a lot of things working in their body, there are high levels of growth hormone and DHEA and all that make them very strong mm -hmm. if you just give them the right start. Now men, they have more problems like um, jock itch and thrush, uh, they could have thrush too. What about um, joint pain? Uh, well arthritis and MS, uh, well arthritis and all types of autoimmune conditions are related to it. Mm -hmm. Gluten intolerance, MS, um, what about, and arthritis. Um, and, foot funguses and, and yeah. nail funguses. Yeah. And if, if it's, that's if all it's showing up on your nails or toenails, uh, even if it's jock itch for mm -hmm. men, and they think it's a sports related thing, they caught it in the gym or something, but it's it's an internal infection. Really? So, so it can, mm -hmm. it, the yeast can be growing in specific areas of the body. Mm -hmm. uh, you can, you know, actually get yeast on your skin. But um, in women, you know, they, they can have a problem in, in a yeast infection mm -hmm. just in the vagina. You can mm -hmm. have a yeast infection in the digestive system, and then you can have it systemically, which means that it actually goes into the bloodstream, and now it's really wrecking havoc with the body. We actually have a picture here of what the yeast cell looks like, and I guess this was taken yeah. from a, a live uh, blood cell analysis. Yeah, it's a beautiful thing, beautiful. <laughs> budding. It looks like this lovely flower. flower. Yeah. yeah, but it can be very dangerous and deadly. I mean. It, People die from yeast infection. Is something like eczema yeast, yeast eczema related? Eczema definitely is. Yeah, um, there's different toxins that the yeast produce, and uh, one of them, uh, a couple of them actually relate, one of them in particular causes uh, psoriasis. Oh, okay, so mm -hmm. those types of, all right, so now dispel the myth that you get yeast infections eating bread. Uh, no, that's just not true. Not true, <laughs> okay. Uh, but or eating yeast. Oh, eating the yeast that has bread, yeah. Or, you know, yeast is also in kombucha, which is a popular drink these days, and beer oh. and wine. Uh, so you can get, you can, your yeast, if you have a yeast infection in your body, you don't want foods that have yeast in it, but they don't cause the yeast okay. infection. <clears throat> There's a lot of different ways that, I used to think yeast infection was caused by taking an antibiotic. Oh. I think that's what happened to me. But now I know that there's, it's a very, uh, it's an infection that's actually very easy to get. So we naturally have yeast present in our body and it can change from a harmless form into a harm, very dangerous, harmful form, just like that. Okay. And so we can alter, we can alter the environment of our body, its environment, the yeast environment, and it'll change into a pathogenic form. Um, 
I our see. diet and other stress, other things trigger it and into to turn into yeast. The toxic form. So everyone mm -hmm. has yeast in the body. It's whether or not that those those certain environmental elements trigger it into the bad bacteria as mm -hmm. opposed to the good bacteria. Yes, it's naturally present in the body in a harmless form, and it easily, easily can become harmful. It's very stealth. It's a very stealth infection. Mm. It literally can go back into the harmless form to evade the immune system and then turn back at its will into the harmful form. So it's quite, a, quite an, I always consider it a formidable enemy in the body that most people don't realize they even have inside of them. Absolutely. Now, how does it cause uh, brain fog? I know that's not a medical term, but well, how? Well, the yeast are producing toxins all the time, 100% of the time. So if you drink alcohol, you notice that your brain kind of becomes foggy, and the next day you wake up and you have a hangover. Well, that, that all, what's happened when you drink alcohol is you get acetaldehyde in your uh, in your body, and you're you're supposed to clear it. Like you urinate, and out goes the you know the alcohol changes to acid alcohol, then it gets eliminated. But what what happens when you have a yeast infection in your body, always producing acid aldehyde, is you're kind of always in that slightly drunk, hungover state. So it's very much affecting the brain. Huh? And does it methylate in the body? Uh, well, if you don't methylate, mm. which is a cycle that has to do with detoxification. It will. Uh, they produce all those toxins. You're not able to eliminate those toxins. Okay. And then um, they. The to like here's another toxin called um, gliotoxin and another one called mannin. Mm -hmm. Both of those are very very good at suppressing the immune system. Like the gliotoxin shreds apart the DNA inside of our white blood cells, My goodness. which is a very important part of the immune system. And the mannin suppresses the immune system also. Mm -hmm. So you need a strong immune system to overcome the yeast infection, but it's so good at suppressing the yeast infection that most people never, never get rid of a yeast infection. And actually, you know, years ago, Dr. Crook said to me, we don't think that you can, we will be able to conquer this condition. And I thought at the time that, that there has to be a way, yeah. but I've actually come full circle back around and because I know it is present in the body and it can change into a harmful form, mm -hmm. dangerous fungal form, basically. And, um, you know, it's very easy to change it into a dangerous form. So I'd say everybody their whole life long has to be on alert. Okay. That they can have a fungal infection at any time. Okay. Antibiotics contribute to birth control you. pills. Uh, all these things that we take, sh high sugar diets, stress, all of those things. If you have those in your life, you, there's a good chance that you um, have it. And then also, most people today are born with it. They really are. It's okay. been for at least 50 years. Babies wow. have been coming in the world with a yeast infection. Every single child with autism has a yeast infection. Wow. So it's, um, it's something that we can't kind of keep sweeping under the rug like right. we have been for so long. It's time to bring out the truth and knowledge about how to keep it under control. Well, a certain amount of it lives in the body, and if it remains in the healthy state, then mm -hmm. it's fine mm -hmm. in the body. Mm -hmm. It's just how to convert it from the, the toxic level mm -hmm. back to the level of homeostasis. Mm -hmm. So, And it can change. You can, you can have a low-grade amount, and then it can become very acute. Like, if, for example, let's say someone has cancer. Well, everyone with diabetes, everybody with cancer will have pretty severe yeast infection, but let's say they go for radiation mm -hmm. or chemotherapy. What's going to happen is the, um, the, those, both of those suppress the immune system. Now the yeast is really going to become acute, and they very likely can die from that. Sometimes if doctors are smart, they'll put the patient on an antifungal prophylactic, you know, prophylactic ahead of time, but a lot of them don't. And many people actually die from the fungal infection not from the cancer, but because they had, they had cancer, the death certificate uh -huh. will say died from cancer. But they didn't really die from the cancer. Now, what about medications for yeast infections like diflucan and those mm -hmm. types, of, types of medications? What well, do you think about that? Well, nystatin is considered the safest, and many, many doctors, including many functional medicine doctors, unfortunately, think it's the answer. But it isn't the answer for a couple of reasons. It's damaging the liver, and also it's not doing the job. It's, it's suppressing the infection, making it look like it's under control mm. when it isn't. So to me, it's not the answer. So the minute you get off of that type of medication, it just rises well, again? Well, if somebody's really miserable and they 
can tolerate, say, the nystatin. Some people, many people can't. They actually feel sick on it. Mm. But if you can tolerate it, and if you're, if it's helping, you know, relieve you of symptoms, the brain fog and the many, many other symptoms, um, hormone imbalances and gut problems, then maybe use it short term. Mm -hmm. But you've got to be on a program that's really conquering the yeast because when you go off that nice statin and you haven't been on this program, they're they're going to come back with a raging, uh, just worse than ever. Okay. All right. And now, are there tests that are reliable that can tell the level of candida that someone has in their body? There are. There are tests that you can take, like Genova okay. uh, Diagnostics is a good one. Um, uh, you can also do live blood, cell, live mm. blood cell analysis like we and saw see if it's in your blood. And there's similar tests to that. But um, for somebody who really had a serious uh, infection, of yeast infection all my life for a long time, I have no signs of it in my body, but I would never be naive enough to say that I couldn't quickly re-trigger it again. Oh, interesting. Mm -hmm. Even you. Okay. All right. Anybody, so anybody can re-trigger it. Yeah. What is leaky gut syndrome? It sounds like a... Well, if you have yeast okay. or other types of pathogens in the gut, or you eat a high saturated fat diet, many things inflame the gut lining. And when that happens... The, the, so our gut lining is really, really, really important part of our body. We don't, most people have no idea that it is. They just call it an it intestine. It has these little yeah. tight junctions. You know, it's mm -hmm. like a little wall, like a brick wall, except it's not solid like brick. It's mm -hmm. very, uh, and things can go through it. But the little tight junctions, when you, when, when the, um, basically the lining now has a, an infection, and so they're porous and loose, mm. and now many more things can leak through that are not supposed to get through. And yeah. when it leaks, what is it that's leaking through and where does it go? Well, well, all the things that aren't supposed to go into the body that are supposed to go, uh, you be, they'll be in your digestive tract being digested and they're supposed to leave. But if they, Toxins. Like, like for example, you eat dairy mm -hmm. and with a leaky gut, you're going to, which, which happens, for example, uh, in the autism community, it's very clear that we don't want those kids on gluten or casein. That's true for really anybody to uh -huh. tell the truth right now, but I'm using autism as an example. So what happens is they have an inflamed gut. Uh, they've been born with it usually and eaten all the wrong foods. And now, now the, both of those are proteins. Gluten is a protein. Casein is a protein. They leak through. Mm. And the immune system, which is an overwhelm anyway, trying to bring the yeast under control, sees these proteins coming into the body and it reacts. It attacks. So we literally have a body uh, at see. war with itself, an immune system at war with the own, its own body. And that's what's called autoimmune conditions, which are rampant today. Once upon a time, they were rare. Mm -hmm. Now there's more than 60 of them that we have been So it's the body for. fighting against the body. That's the, what... the body fighting against its own tissue. Mm -hmm. it's, um, it sees itself as a foreign invader, mm -hmm. basically. OK. All right, so let's talk about ways that we can uh, control the yeast infection and actually turn it into the healthy bacteria. And you have a protocol for this, which I'm really happy about. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so I'd yeah. like to talk a little bit about that. It's just Donna's protocol for conquering candida in the right way. Um, okay, so one of the first steps is you say you starve the yeast. Yeah, yeah the first thing you have to do is stop feeding them. So obviously, uh, uh, sugar, gluten, has to go out of your diet 100%. So the body called your diet is gluten-free and sugar-free. Mm -hmm. And Casing because you free, will right? have, and it's good to be off of dairy in the beginning. Okay. There's not, many, many people don't tolerate dairy. There's different components in dairy. There's the casein, and there's the whey protein, the and sugar. there's the fat, mm -hmm. and there's the lactic uh, toast, which is a sugar. You know, some, some people are fine with the casein, but they can't handle the fat. Uh, so they would do better on the low fat. Mm. Some people are having genetic reactions because of their genes are reacting to the milk sugar and mm. the, lac the lactose, and they don't, or they, or their guts disturbed and they don't make the bacteria are in, are not in there to make the lactase, which is the enzyme that digests the lactose. Okay, got it. So anyway, um, you know, there's there's different like we're against dairy in the beginning, and um, the other thing is so so you want to. Uh, cortisol, you know, if you're under a lot of stress, mm -hmm. cortisol raises sugar and in your bloodstream. The extra glucose mm. feeds the yeast. Okay. And, and so, um, you know, I, I try to help people calm down. 
and build their adrenals and their thyroid, which I know we're going to talk about in a little while. But also, um, be on the diet, again, gluten-free, sugar-free, casein-free, mm -hmm. loaded with lots of healthy vegetables, 80% vegetables, because you want to alkalize. The yeast are actually in your body eating things that you're eating. They eat all, they eat all tons of minerals, they eat proteins. You become very, very depleted uh. and very acidic uh, when they're in, living in you, because, and they want that. They want the environment that they live in to be acidic so they can stay alive Stay. and well. And when you eat sugar, you're feeding them. So stop feeding them, and at the same time, you must build the immune system. Now, since 70% of the immune system is located in the gut, mm -hmm. you have to build a healthy inner ecosystem or microbiome in the gut. In the gut. That, that's critical to do that. And then also, if you do eat some low-sugar fruits, like berries, and you've got this healthy microbiome mm -hmm. of bacteria and community of bacteria in your gut, they will eat that little bit of sugar in the blueberry or the strawberry. And, oh. uh, they, but another interesting thing that's, you know, everybody today is getting conscious about the importance of avoiding gluten. Yes. You go into the health food stores and you see gluten-free on everything. Yeah. It's become kind of a big marketing gimmick mm -hmm. tool for a lot of companies. But actually, uh, another reason for avoiding the uh, gluten, besides the fact that it causes inflammation to the gut lining, is that it looks like, uh, it looks like yeast. It's a protein that looks like yeast, and so the immune system will attack. So I, I think that's another really important reason to get gluten out of your diet, okay. by the way. I just thought that, yeah. that that's important. People think gluten isn't good for you because it tears up the gut lining. I hear that all the time. But also because we have a yeast infection, gluten is, is a problem. It because feeds the yeast. It's, um, well, usually gluten is in foods that feed the yeast, like pancakes and right. you know, sandwich bread and cookies and cakes and things, those foods come usually with sugar and bad mm -hmm. oils, mm -hmm. and they're feeding the yeast. Okay. You want to build your immune system, and that takes healthy proteins, good fats, and lots and lots of vegetables, now, and fermented foods. Okay, and we'll talk about those, but can you take something that could actually help kill the yeast, like um, oregano mm -hmm. or yep, um, yep. Can. bitter herbs? What can you, you can. take? Oil of oregano is excellent. Um, grape seed extract is excellent. There's uh, companies that actually produce products that are, um, you okay. know, are antifungal, but I don't think that you should take them right away because if you start on a healthy diet, mm. well, first of all, if you're not doing the diet, they don't work. But if you start on a healthy diet, there's usually so much die-off that you don't need to be taking this too to make the die-off too severe. Right. So okay. you're, you're better off just starting with a healthy diet, and then later on, as you get to the stage where you're kind of refining a little more, if you need to, take the um, oil of oregano, for example. That's a good olive, way. Olive leaf extract is very good. I never had to use those myself because the diet works so well mm. and everything that I teach. But you know, they're not, there's something else we can use. Okay. And now another step in this is um, to support the thymus, right? And the adrenals. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, well, the adrenals give you energy, so you mm -hmm. have to feed them. Uh, they need B vitamins big time. They need lots of vitamin C. They need lots of minerals. And the, our food is doing that. The diet is giving the adrenals the food they need. And, and what hurts the most is sugar. Uh -huh. We're not having sugar and gluten. You know, we're taking those out so the adrenals get stronger. And the thymus, you know, the thymus is an organ that no one talks about very much. It's a huge organ in our body when we're a baby, just huge. Like if you look at the a little newborn baby or a fetus and you see the size of their thymus, you think, oh my gosh, you know, this gigantic organ. And then later on, as the person grows, after they get into their 40s, it's, so, it's shrunk so small. And it's very common today for somebody in their 50s, late 50s, 60s and all, for if they had to undergo surgery, the doctor can't even find the thymus. It's gone. Where is and it it's, located? It's right in their chest. Oh, okay. It's huge and it, gets, it disappears. So I think supporting the thymus is very important, too. I've even lately been encouraging people to take thymus as a glandular. You can actually order very good thymus glandulars. What now, what do you do in order, what does the thymus do for the body, first of all? Oh, it's, it is your, another critical arm of the immune system because okay. what happens is the, um, the T cells, I mean the cells go into the uh, thymus and they become immune fighting cells. That's, it's like their academy of training to become a okay. warrior. 
And so they have to go in, and if you don't have one, <laughs> if you don't have one, there's nothing, no academy for them to go to. So you've lost a big part of your I love how you personify these organs. It really makes it <laughs> yeah. so clear for, for me to understand. Okay, so then the last step of the protocol is sleeping well. And yeah, really important. And I see that today people aren't sleeping. Yeah, and if they have we talked about this. candidiasis, that will, that's another symptom of a yeast infection. Uh, you mean not sleeping well is a symptom of candidiasis? Candidiasis, too. Oh, okay. There's so many symptoms, mm. but, you know, not sleeping well. I mean, that if you have candidiasis, you probably are not sleeping well. For one thing, it messes up your neurotransmitters, including serotonin. And serotonin is so critical for being calm and being happy and for making melatonin. So absolutely, it interferes with sleep. Okay. So you want to fix that. I mean, as you bring your yeast infection under your control, your symptoms should be getting, start disappearing. But then... Um, See, I, I think the world that we live in today, the high-stress, stimulating world of TV and... Caffeine and, and sugar, and, yes. Yeah, we, yes. we super-stimulate ourselves. Yeah. And then we deplete our adrenals and... Minerals. We don't sleep. Yeah. Our mind is chattering all the time. And theanine's fantastic for that chattering mind. Nice. Especially blood type A and ABs, they have a chattering mind. Their mind is always trying to figure everything out. And yeah. most people, like 85% of the children with autism are blood type A. Wow. So I'm, I'm always watching people for their blood type. And if they are certain, <laughs> particularly if they're blood type O, I know that mm -hmm. they have certain things they're struggling with and, and how to fix that for them. You that's know? A, that's O's a, are calmer. They handle stress better. So let's talk about what Candida does and how it affects your aging process. Does it speed up the aging process? Well, it's taking nutrients from your body, yeah, in your body. Okay. And um, it's totally screwing up your brain and your neurotransmitters, mm -hmm. and it's causing autoimmune conditions, which are all part of aging. I mean, that's what we okay. think come with aging. Now, I personally think, I remember being a little child and looking at very old people thinking, it must be awful to end our life. I mean, in other words, someday it's going to be painful to get old mm. and be shriveled up and, you know, have Alzheimer's and things like that, I thought, do you have to go there? Do we yeah. have to do that? And, you know, people always did that. So they always assumed that we, it was, there was no choice. We just ended up that way. But that's not true. So I'm very positive that if you keep your energy up by keeping your hormones balanced, keep these infections out of your body so mm -hmm. they're not causing inflammation, have a really healthy gut microbiome mm -hmm. so you're feeding yourself right. And, mm -hmm. And um, having a strong immune system and you know, your hormones are balanced. The gut's very important for healthy hormones. That's so the way to... All of that is so vital for staying young. Uh -huh. and, and I know that I, if there were several of me, I, w I kind of would like to have the me that didn't do all of the stuff oh. I do. Just yeah. check out and see what I would well, feel no, like. Well, you're pretty good proof, though, Donna. But, um, I mean... I actually am at 68 way healthier than I was 68. at 16. I really am healthier. I feel better and have Incredible. more energy. Mm -hmm. Every, my, my mind works better. I'm happier. Your and skin is amazing, and your hair is amazing. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. I don't have gray in my hair. I don't have wrinkles you don't? in my skin, but no gray. No, this is my natural hair color. You're yeah. kidding? Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's great. Yeah. Sometimes That's great. I get stressed out and you but know, what do, what's travel, the gray and then I get a few from? Is it cost? Lots of mineral. Uh, the first thing I do when I start traveling and my hair starts getting that little gray mm -hmm. in it. I start taking a whole lot of our minerals. We have these minerals called ancient earth minerals. Oh. Sometimes I'll, I'll make a tea and I'll put in Heishu Wu for a while. Mm -hmm. And the, it just, my hair just suddenly, I don't know what happens to those gray hair. And you don't disappear. lose your hair? No, 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 I don't. I mean, well, I mean, of course, everybody loses about 100 hair a day, but I don't have hair falling out, so it's yeah. still thick for my age. That is but, um, great. But, you know, uh, for sure I'm aging. Like, when we age, our face changes on... Um, like the, the distance from your underneath your eye to the top of your lip, right there, um, mm -hmm. lengthens. And so people are going to change how they look as they go through the different decades of their life. Mm -hmm. But Well, maybe not because we've got stem cells and cell therapy and many things coming in to, to do. that. Are maybe we, if you're 30, 40 years old right now and you start doing this, you probably won't have that, those changes happening. Mm -mm. But for those of us that didn't get those in our 30s and 40s, um, you know, we, there's a certain amount of aging that occurs, but it's optimal aging. Like it's aging without the pain, without the arthritis, without the suffering, without losing your mental capabilities. That's the biggest fear that people have, because I wrote the book 
the guides are growing younger, and I actually researched a lot on people's fears and you know mm -hmm. the whole baby boomer generation. I really wanted to know and understand what happened to us and what did we do to the world when we came in. And so the um, you know it's just we don't have to go there. We completely control that. But the biggest fear that we have is losing our independence mm -hmm. and losing our mind. Mm -hmm. Mental. And, and, yeah. and what does that mean? Somebody's going to help you walk across the street and get up and go to the bathroom. You're going to be wearing diapers. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know about anybody else, but I'm not going there. <laughs> so. You can tell. Well, I love the, the stand that you take for the aging community as well. You don't have to age in a painful way. You can age gracefully yeah, yeah. We will and age. healthily. I mean, mm -hmm. And we're going to die. I mean, those are facts of life. Right. But why not just you know, enjoy life enjoy and one day, you know, I have a feeling that a whole bunch of us are going to be able to um, decide we've been here long enough and start putting it out there that we're ready to go. And, you know, we'll just But after you've been a contribution and after you've done your, you've lived growing, your purpose and you know, I, I think passed growth. on your legacy and yeah. Well, I think one of the most important reasons why we're here is actually to grow yes. and love ourselves more and become a better person so we feel better about ourselves. At that yeah. point, when you think, Okay, I feel good about myself. I have these wonderful kids that are in the world and grandchildren mm -hmm. and great great grandchildren. They're all here. I've I've had a yeah. purpose for being here. But you know, I'm I've been there, done that, I'm ready to go. Because I feel like I know, I feel very strongly that there's another unseen world. It's interesting to me because we have this this world in our gut yeah. that we never see. We have bacteria all over our body that we never see, and so we've never known it was there. So this spiritual world that's out there yeah. that we're in and part of and it's so much influencing us. We don't see it. But I have a feeling that there. you know there's a desire that eventually comes as we grow older. Yeah. It makes us want to return back to that. Yeah. That's beautiful. I, I don't said. have any fear of going there. I just thought I'm not ready to do it yet. And if I'm gonna be here with things I still want to do, mm -hmm. I want to do them with the energy to do them, with the mental capacities to do them. Yeah. And yeah. The enthusiasm to do them too. <laughs> Well, that's a great perspective. I didn't even plan on going into the spiritual aspects of aging, but it makes perfect sense that you have those philosophies because it's what keeps you, it's also what you think, what you drink, and what you eat that keeps you young. Um, and I also, uh, along the lines of aging, we talked a little bit about the obesity epidemic that's happening now. Could people be gaining weight because they have an overgrowth of cancer? Oh, absolutely. Okay. For sure they are. It will make everybody, including men, particularly blood type A men, uh, have this mm. kind of mushy, bloated look on their body. For one thing, the yeast um, produce their own estrogens, and they do that because the estrogen feeds them. They eat off of they eat, feed off of estrogen. Oh, and then they um, actually screw up the receptor sites because there's this false estrogen that your cells think that they think it's estrogen, but it isn't. So it really messes up the woman, a mm. man and a woman's endocrine system. It makes a man more estrogen dominant. He loses, so his, he might be having testosterone in the body, but not enough for the estrogen. So almost immediately that everybody that goes on the diet immediately loses about 10 pounds in a month. They can lose wow. 18 pounds. Wow. And, and right away it's bloating. And, and so people and think they've already begun to lose weight. They look so much better in their clothes than in the mirror because there's so much bloating that's disappeared. So now, once they go on this diet, they need to have a, a proper way to eliminate the candida in the body? Does it have to be detoxified? Well, well when it dies, it's toxic. I mean, okay. they're producing toxins when they're alive. Their dead bodies are toxins as they die off. So you need to expect a die off. Okay. And I used to think, you know, that you just have to go through a die-off. But what I know now is if you are doing uh, clonics and enemas from the very beginning or even beforehand, mm. then as the die-off occurs, your detoxification pathways are open. That's really critical. Okay. And that's a whole conversation in, in and of itself. But I really would like to talk about what it means to detoxify properly. Because if you've, you've got to get your detoxification pathways open to clear the yeast or anything else that's leaving your body. So can the cultured foods that you talk about and the fermented foods that you talk about in the body ecology diet mm -hmm. help with that, with the elimination process? Well, what, what they're absolutely, first of all, take the fermented vegetables. They're mm -hmm. made with cruciferous vegetables. We usually use kale and cabbage always as a base. Okay. And they, cruciferous vegetables have been proven in research to be powerful cleansers. Mm. Um, they detoxify the estrogens that are down 
you know, after we have estrogen, or even if it's the estrogen that the yeast are making, those toxins have to go through the liver, they end up in the stool, they're supposed to leave the body. And they don't, so they're reabsorbed. Well, if you've got healthy bacteria, and the good bacteria in the gut and healthy microbiome, and because you're eating fermented foods, they bind up that, those, the toxins, they bind up the estrogens, mm -hmm. and they uh, don't let it get reabsorbed back up into the body again, which is very, very important. But also, just the nature of cruciferous vegetables, they are cleansers. They will prevent colon cancer, breast okay. cancer. Yeah, we've done that for a while. Cancer of the colon. Colon cancer and prostate, there's research to show that. So they are uh, very powerful cleansers. And, then, and that's true really of all the you know, products that I recommend, the fermented coconut kefir, okay. the uh, probiotic liquids, they're all powerful cleansers. Especially, and then coconut kefir is wonderful uh, because they, it's a great cleanser for the liver too. It specifically cleanses the liver. Let's talk a little bit about the cultured vegetables. We have a uh, picture here of what the cultured vegetables look like, and they're beautiful. When you, we're going to have a they wonderful are, really segment are. where we're going to okay. spend a whole t entire segment where Donna is going to get to show you how to make these beautiful vegetables, which I'm really excited about. And it's going to be helpful for me because it always seems like such a daunting process of how to get these gorgeous things into these jars and not have them explode or, or rot. <laughs> and you yeah. have a really wonderful way of teaching it. It's simple if, it, if you really get... But to eat a, a, a small portion of these cultured vegetables with every single mm -hmm. meal, mm -hmm. will that help kill the candida, the bad candida? What it does is it's helping you to digest the food. And okay. undigested food is feeding the yeast. Okay. Okay. The ones in your gut. Okay. And the whole meal is alkalizing. So you're creating an environment that's alkaline. That will kill them. Okay. They can't survive in an alkaline environment. Okay. They, um, they survive in an acidic environment. But also those bacteria are powerful immune. They're, they are your immune system. They're sending signals to the gut wall which is actually a brain in our mm. body connected to the brain in our head. And they produce substances constantly all the time that kill the bad things and you know, make the good. They, they eat, we have trillions of bacteria in our gut mm -hmm. and every single one of them have their own sets of genes. So if you're eating mm. well, they're expressing good genes inside of energy. us for mm -hmm. us. Mm -hmm. Definitely gives you energy to fight off an infection and they are the immune system. So. They're doing so much that people have no idea that something as simple as a couple of spoonfuls of cultured vegetables along with your eggs, along uh, wrapped up inside of a turkey slice, along with your you know, chicken Did. salad or mm -hmm. whatever you're having. They're, it, they're, it's just huge. Great. Great to know. Is there anything else that you want us to know about Candida? Uh, we've covered a lot. We've covered a lot. See. I just want to make sure that you've told us everything that's in, because my whole goal here is to get it out of your head and into ours. Well, I'm so. sure after this is over with, I'll think of a whole bunch of other things. No. It's, just, it's widely uh, all over the world. It's yep. a huge, serious problem. It's underlying every condition that you can think of. Women have it when they're pregnant, diabetes, insulin resistance, cancer autoimmune conditions, you can be sure you have a yeast infection. So first and foremost, get that under control. Okay. And we've showed us how to do that through your protocol, which mm -hmm. I appreciate, and also the importance of the so culture foods. It is so precise. After going through the advanced fellowship through A4M, I am more confident than ever that right. what I'm teaching is so spot on. And I want everybody to at least know it. If you decide it's over your head, you can't do it. Now, a lot of times people can't. It seems people pretty read easy, it. Though. It is actually really easy, yeah. but they might read the book and think, I'm not ready for this yet. But it's amazing how many people do come back because they get tired of feeling bad. Yes. And it works. Yes. That's what I would want to say yes. to people. It really works. And this is why it works because yeah. it's got everything in it. And if, you get, if you're tired of having digestive issues, that really does drain your energy and causes... And your brain's not working and you have no energy right. and your hormones are screwed up Wreaks and you're havoc. looking awful. And, mm -hmm. you know, people used to say to me all the time, what's wrong? And I'd say, nothing, I'm fine. But, and then, but I, did, I look so unhappy mm. when I looked in the mirror. Yeah. I even noticed it myself, but they noticed it, like something wrong. But I just was really unhealthy and I had a yeast infection. Mm -hmm. And now I'm not, I don't have yeast infection and I'm, and I'm really healthy. So yeah. the natural order or way of human beings is to be bright and sparkling and happy and 
enthusiastic and passionate about something, you know, that's yeah. what health is. Today, we're gonna to learn some foundational recipes that'll get you started on the right track. And for the seasoned body ecology chef, there are a few new tips as well. So thank you for joining me again, Donna. Well, I'm ready to go again. <laughs> yes, I'm you glad are. we're getting to do this, because this is information. If you thought people were afraid of fermented vegetables, they're more afraid of sea vegetables. Sea so that's vegetables. what this segment is about, Okay, sea vegetables. So we're gonna be making a cucumber wakame salad. What is wakame? <laughs> Wakame is, in a, is one of a bunch of sea vegetables, a very common one. If you go into a Japanese uh, restaurant and you order a bowl of miso soup, the green stuff that's floating around the top is wakame. And, uh, and you, in the olden days, I used to, used to buy long strands of it. We'd have to cut the rib out and chop it up. But today you can get cut wakame oh, or right. wakame flakes in bags like this. Okay. You know, if you go into most health food stores, there's a whole section where all the bags of sea vegetables are hanging up. And then there's a very common, so we're gonna use the wakame in this recipe. Is that and, the And they're all dried, they're dried, they're vegetables that have been dried and they come out of the ocean, but they're nothing unusual, really. But they're rich in iodine? Uh, very excellent source of iodine, so really they're a must for the thyroid. And just a very wonderful balance of sea vegetables, and also, you know, they, of they minerals resist. minerals also, right? Minerals? Uh, I mean, of minerals, okay. that's right, exactly, minerals, thanks. And um, they're, they have this amazing ability to help us fight radiation. And so they're, they're really great for that purpose too. Um, we have a product called Ocean Plant Extract where we take 50 pounds of a sea vegetable that's near Tanzania, like really pure ocean, and then we, you end up with one pound of extract. So wow. it's super concentrated, wow. but it's for the thyroid for sure. Now these are four and, different kinds of sea vegetables here? Yeah, and so sea vegetables are known to be good for the thyroid and good for radiation, and they just uh, have all the minerals in them. Okay, so okay. these are four common, easy, easily obtained sea vegetables. This one is called arame. It's a really nice one. It's uh, kind of light and flaky looking, but it's one of this, it's sweeter than a, another one. Some, another, there's another black one called hijiki or hiziki. Uh, different ways to pronounce it, mm -hmm. and it's it's a little saltier and more you know hearty. But okay. this is a sweeter one, and this one actually you don't even have to cook. You can soak it, chop it up a little bit, and throw it right in a salad. So we could actually use this in there, uh, but it's a little uh, little sea vegetables tend to add a little bit of a salty flavor. Okay, okay. And then um, this one is agar. I love this one. It's really a vegetable gelatin. So you can use it to gel things, like you can make jello and type, oh. jello type things. Wow. You can use um, aspects, vegetable aspect or fruit aspects, um, puddings. You know, puddings. You can. They're great. Does you it have, have a salty to, flavor also? It has no flavor. Oh. You put it in water and bring it to a boil, and then let it dissolve. And when it cools is when it starts gelling. So at that point, when it's dissolved, you'd add it to something that you wanted to make, say a pudding. And then as the pudding sits in outside, on either on a room temperature or in the refrigerator, it becomes uh, more gelatinous. So you don't want to overdo. But it's interesting because in the, very few people know this, but in the 1920s, this was a fantastic laxative for people. They, if they got constipated, they just take, ate food with agar in it. Interesting. Uh, so I, yeah, it's I was going to ask about the digestive cool. aspects of these of the sea vegetables. Why mm -hmm. does it help? digestion and intestinal Well, health. anytime you have a food that's rich in minerals, it's gonna help okay. peristaltic movement uh, too. So, and then this one is a flat sea vegetable called kombu. In okay. Japan, they make a stock all the time from putting this in water and then they simmer it for a while, a long time, uh, maybe four hours, or, even, or they'll let it sit overnight in the water, but when they come back, they take the water and use it to take out the kombu, but then they use it as a stock and that is what they use for miso soup. You can add mushrooms, you can add fish flakes, but the main ingredient in a miso soup base is the kombu stock. And that's what you see floating in the miso soup. And, but they remove this, so you don't see this. However, if you're making any kind of a soup or stew or a broth, you know, for people that can't eat animal protein, animal broths are wonderful for you. And you, because you're, you're taking out the chunky meat. So like a chicken broth? You're just getting the broth, chicken broth, lamb broth, beef mm. broth. And in, in body ecology, we use broths for people who have Crohn's and colitis for a while until they're gut heals. But what we always make sure we do is we put the broth in the refrigerator 
And then when it's cold, all the fat rises to the top. Mm -hmm. You want to scrape off that cooked saturated fat and get rid of it because okay. most people can't handle that. Okay. But you can definitely put into your broth with your bones or whatever, your um, animal broth that you're making, sea vegetables. All of these can go in. Well, not that one so much. Nice. But the kombu and the wakame can go in. And then you're straining that anyway. Instead but you're of getting salt. all the wonderful minerals. Great. And the iodine and all. Now, when you cook this or when you put the wakame in water, right. it mm -hmm. expands, right? Right. So that's what's happened here. We're going to put this in there. And if I wanted to, I could have chopped it finer. It, this is cut wakame as it comes out of the package. But let's say I wanted it really fine. And just put it on the cutting board and just chop it up. More. Is that boiling water or just room temp water? Um, no, it just it was room temperature and it oh. just sat out for about fifteen minutes, got soft, and now it's ready to go in our salad. Great. Okay. So now we have all right. So the, our ingredients here are these beautiful cucumbers. Now these are mm -hmm. shredded. Yeah, but also too, like I like to take some of the skin off to make the cucumber. It's still pretty to have it like this. Actually, it looks pretty but also makes it a little more digestible because, of course, there's a lot of nutrients in the skin, but mm -hmm. it's harder to, to digest. All of these things are extraordinary fiber, and we need fiber in our intestines to make them healthy. Vegetables are your best source of fiber. Okay. And so now, to make this recipe, you want to have cut either cut your um, cucumber very, very in very thin slices, or if you've got one of these cool devices, which are very inexpensive, you can just take your cucumber, which is what I did for these, and oh, okay. you can just slice like back and forth like that, and you get all these nice great slices. So it's really fast. And easy. And, then, <laughs> and fast and easy, right? Fast and easy is important today. So um, just the rest is just, uh, you, can, you can dice these onions. Okay. So I could have made them smaller, but they also are fine to make them bigger. Okay. And um, I'm the mixer this time. Really, you want to mix in some okay. sea vegetables, either all of it or some of it. You know, if you think it's too much, don't put it all in. Somebody soaked a lot of this, so it's probably Great. more than we need. I won't use it all. Okay. But you want to just toss it all together. And okay. Yeah, it's a little, you know, the sea vegetables are a little stuck together, so you have to just keep working on them. Okay. All right. And then we've and got... red peppers, very nice. If you don't like red pepper, don't put it in. But okay. It's a really pretty color. Okay. Um, and this by, is so and beautiful. by apology, we don't do tomatoes because so many people react to them. They don't know they are, huh. especially people with blood type A and B. Now, O's are the ones that handle tomatoes a little better. Hmm. And so, you know, you can add tomato. If you wanted to, you could add tomatoes, particularly if you're going to eat this alone. But tomatoes are a fruit. And they really, ideally, uh, they they digest really, really fast. And ideally, they should be eaten alone. Oh, really? Yeah, if you're going to put them in a smoothie or something, if, if you, tomatoes work really well now, for you, but they are a fruit. Not do, a, you, do you commonly cook with nightshades, like the red peppers and um, green Only peppers? very small quantities. We okay. keep them down. And some people are fine with them. Like, I have zero problem with them, and other people are extremely sensitive to them. As we've but learned. But usually when people are well... They have no problem with the nightshades or any other food. That's usually the, actually if you're reacting to foods, that's almost like the first sign of having problems in your intestines. Interesting. You, you have sh we should not be reacting to foods. Our intestines are too cl you know stopped up and, and toxic, mm -hmm. and uh, that's why cleaning them is important. That's why we're in, we believe strongly in the value of colonics and colon therapy and, um, and well, so on to clean out old material that's stuck in there because that's a common reason why people are reacting to foods. You also mentioned the, the cultured vegetables, the fermented part of it, and as they... They're fantastic for helping clean. They're like little rotor rooters. And they digest also, they pre-digest some of the uh, acids in the foods. Is uh, that right? Well, if, you take, if they're eaten in a meal, say, with protein, they're going to help digest that protein. If they're eaten with a grain, they're going to help digest the grain. Okay. Now... Let's make our own dressing. So I think yes. we could use more sea vegetables. Sure. So let's add some more. Maybe okay. let's add all of it. Why not? All right. All right. Great. This, this is fun cooking with you. you. All right. Thank I mean, you. It disappeared sort of as you were mixing it yeah. around there. As it broke up. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful. Okay. And now this kind of makes a little bit of a dressing as you... I don't use dressing Well, it's a lot. already gotten juicy, right? Yeah. So it doesn't it need has. much. So all we're yeah. going to do is add in... Um, this is a third of a cup of really nice quality apple cider vinegar. Okay. I got this from my farmer's market. It's really a wonderful one. And yeah. this is olive oil, but this one's special. This has actually been infused with blood orange. But Ooh, yum. Um, it's just, you don't have to, any olive oil it works well. I just thought this would be a fun one to use mm -hmm. today. So we're going to add just a tablespoon. 
That's all you need. Okay. Believe it or not. Or a little touch, touch more if you want. Okay. All right. Just and that helps much. the cucumbers not stick together so much, right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, now it'll be easier to start mixing this together. It smells wonderful. I and love it. And the only other thing we need now is salt. So basically okay. it's a salad with an oil and vinegar dressing. I appreciate making my own dressings just because the dressings that go into the bottles, into the shelves, become rancid after a while. And most people's uh, refrigerators are lined with those dressings in the refrigerator door. And they're all mostly bad after a couple of days, aren't they? Yeah, but you know, um, olive oil always spoils if oxygen gets into it. So uh, it's better to keep okay. it in a dark bottle where air can't get into it. Um, the other thing, too, is that a lot of people think that olive oil is like the holy grail of oils. Like everybody should be eating olive oil. Mm -hmm. But now that we can test people's genes, we realize that's not true. People with a gene uh, called the APOE4 gene don't do well in the Mediterranean diet. Alcohol, mm -hmm. like wine, is not good for them, and mm -hmm. they don't do well in olive oil. Interesting. So it's not. It's going to be a great... Um, the future is nutritional genomics, when people are going to get their genes tested and then be able to pinpoint exactly what foods are best for them. And eat according to your genes. Mm -hmm. That's a great, Absolutely. great idea. Yep. Now, this a is a good title for a book. You, you um, introduced me to Herba Mare, and mm -hmm. I love this. I use this on everything now. Well, I've been recommending this for about 20 years, and honestly, I have no idea really how to pronounce it. I don't know if it's Herba Mare or Herba Mare. Or <laughs> But the thing is, it's basically a biodynamic product. They've taken sea salt and herbs, a lot of herbs, and, um, and a little bit of sea salt. And so I always, I, I use the Celtic sea salt a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm, it's always my go-to salt for things. But then I'll often finish with a little bit of herb amari. That's great. And it, so it just You can put it on poultry great together. or fish mm -hmm. or... I didn't think even of putting it on salads, which is great. I've never, ever introduced it to somebody who didn't thank me, that you know, <laughs> loved knowing it was... It Easily was, found in health food stores, yeah. and it's a really mm -hmm. great product to have if in your not, kitchen. If it's not, have them order it, because it's great. Yes, absolutely. Yeah, All right, well, this is how to make a cucumber wakame salad. Now, this is extremely easy to make. Even I can do it. <laughs> and Did you sprinkle the herb mar on? I, I or whatever, I whatever I just, that stuff is. Did I, you sprinkle it on? I yet? didn't. Here, we'll do a little bit. You can do it uh, the top of. Um, yeah, you can put it on the top too. It helps yeah. if you open it. It does, it does. <laughs> it's much better that way. <laughs> much more effective. All right, great. It's a little bit strong. All right, well, we have learned a lot, I have at least, about sea vegetables. And hopefully, we have taken the mystery out of sea vegetables. They're incredibly uh, healthy, they're wonderful for your digestive system, mm -hmm. and they're rich in. Iodine, minerals, and terrific for for overall digestion, which we're talking about. So intestinal health. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Bon, bon appetit. Thank you. Do you have <laughs> All right. Work? Yes, I do. Thank you very much. All right, and we come back. We're going to learn from Donna her very special way on how to make quinoa, and uh, we'll learn a little mm. bit about that when I'm we come back. Too. All yes. right. Thank you so much. Mm. Mm. <laughs> That's good. I think mm. it needs a We are back, and Donna Gates is going to show us a new and healthier way to make quinoa so that it doesn't have oxalates. Is that what it's called? Right, oxalates. What but, are those? Okay, they're poisons in plants. They're only in the plant world. You won't find them in meat or milk or anything. They're only in plants. They're, the certain plants are very high in oxalates. Spinaches, nuts, all nuts and seeds. Hmm. Um, soy, if, unless it's fermented, is high, and chocolate is very high in and Swiss chard is another one. And quinoa. Sweet potato. <laughs> and because quinoa and millet are not are actually seeds, they're high in oxalates. Okay. So I see. along the way, one of the things I discovered is that when people have candidiasis, they are very sensitive to oxalates. And if they eat foods with oxalates, their their symptoms of their yeast symptoms become worse. So I'm very careful. We don't count calories in body ecology, but we do count oxalates. Huh. Now, it doesn't mean you should avoid them entirely. Most people, some people maybe need to stay off of them completely. You would be surprised, but people are having dry eyes and, and, and arthritic symptoms and many problems that they have no pain in the body. They have no idea it's related to all the oxalates they're eating. Interesting. And I've talked to people and, and asked them what they're eating when they have problems. And, you know, they're putting almond milk in their smoothie and they're mm. eating a lot of nuts and seeds throughout the day or even they're vegetarian. So they're eating chocolate and nuts and seeds uh, because they're, you know, vegan and so on. And 
they, they're, that's what a lot of people do when they do vegan. So I find that they're really in trouble. And, and what so, do these poisons do to the body? Well, they, they're in the plant to protect the plant from other insects eating the plants. If they weren't in there, we probably wouldn't have any plants because the insects would have eaten them up. Okay. So to oxalates to an insect is like eating, they eat the plant, it's like little shards of glass and it, sh and it literally um, tears up their mouth okay. so they won't eat it. And uh, for us though, we have bacteria in our gut. We, we're supposed to anyway, not that people do, but... When we're born, around the time that we start crawling, a bacteria, uh, his name is Oxalobacter formigenes, shows up in the gut. And his only job is to eat oxalates in foods. Huh. So around that time, we're also beginning to eat plant foods. Right. I mean, that's what I think a baby first food should, should be, be. Is plants. Uh -huh. You know, just pureed plant foods. And then, uh, but so what happens though, we take antibiotics and then Oxalobacter formigenes gets wiped out. Okay. And he never comes back again. Oh. So people go on eating foods as if he's there. Now, a few, some of the other bacteria can do a fair job of taking over for him, including Plantarum and mm -hmm. some Bifidus, like Bifidus and Fantus, are fair eaters of oxalates. But you, you, um, most of us react to foods high in oxalates. So what, what I have done with quinoa, because our diet can be very low to oxalate, and when you come to quinoa and millet, you're getting a food that's high in oxalate because it's a seed. So I pondered on that for a while and I figured out a way to solve that problem. Okay. And so what you do, the usual way to make quinoa is you um, wash it and soak it and then you... Now how long do you soak it for? You want to soak it about eight hours and you do oh. that to re remove another plant poison called phytic acid. And mm -hmm. as long as the phytic acid is bound to the quinoa or any grain, or nut or seed, you're not going to digest it. So when you soak it overnight or, or mm -hmm. for eight hours, eight hours, then you drain off the water. Mm -hmm. Do you do that in a in a colander or yeah. do you rinse it at that point? Yeah, this this is a really um, you want to find for quinoa. They're so tiny the yeah. seeds. You need yeah. a really fine colander. But actually, I found this one at the um, Japanese markets, and I've got two oh. of them. One of them has little tiny holes in the bottom, mm -hmm. and this the um, Japanese are really clever because they're always making rice. And the things that they make. That's but this great. is little things like the little slidey things, uh, slots. So you can drain and the water. So you can drain it off and clean it that way. Okay. And the other one I use when I want the water to go through because okay. it doesn't go through those little holes. But um, but so the most people will make their quinoa by boiling the water and putting in some salt and then they maybe just like two cups of water they put in their cup of quinoa. Okay. And they'll cook it for about 25, 30 minutes, take it off the heat and let it sit and get fluffy. Now, this way is a better way because what we do is we, you're going to cook the quinoa just like you would cook noodles, pasta. So I take a pot about this size and I fill it, you know, not all the way, but say halfway up with water. Mm -hmm. And when the water's boiling, mm -hmm. I add salt. I mm -hmm. usually use a good quality salt like Celtic sea salt. But, you know, this is, you're going to throw this water away in a few minutes, so you don't okay. need the most expensive salt out there. Okay. But you want to put in a good bit of salt, like a couple of teaspoons or so of salt. To mineralize the water? Is that the reason? Uh, well, it makes the quinoa taste much better okay. to have a little salt in the water. And actually, it's balanced because uh, this is very alkaline and mm. grains and seeds are a little bit acidic. So you put the salt in the something alkaline and acid together, you get perfect balance. Perfect, okay. So what we're going to do is, you know, when this is boiling, then we add in the quinoa that we've soaked and washed, and when it's been in there 10 and a half minutes, it's exactly what it takes for quinoa. Okay. You take it to the sink and you pour off your water. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then at the very end, you'll see how the quinoa is in the bottom, and at the very end you pour the rest of the quinoa in and catch that. Okay. Now what you'll notice about this when you prepare it this way, it's just very, very fluffy, That's what we have which here. is great because if you want to make a quinoa salad, you can put a little oil and vinegar dressing, or you know, if you've got, I even have a dressing I love from the store by Cindy's Kitchen. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, I, she makes one dressing that I think is great because it's got the right oils in it, and it's called creamy miso. So that's really fast to put a little bit of that in there and chop up some vegetables, and you've got a great little quinoa salad. Without the oxalates. This is beautiful food, and it adds life. And of course, it helps digestion, which is the key to everything. Elimination mm -hmm. and... Easy to digest. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're getting rid of your, your candidiasis and other infections in your body. And adding in and the good bacteria. aging well, aging optimally, and 
there's no reason not to do it. It's simple. It's delicious. I always forget to say that, by the way. It's absolutely delicious. Oh, yeah. Yes, it's healthy. It's absolutely delicious, and it's beautiful. And the little things that you've added, that you've taught us to add to really improve the quality of the food that we're getting is brilliant. So thank well, we you. We are so lucky today to live in a world where this kind of food is so available. Mm. It's ridiculous to eat junk food when this is available. Right, absolutely. This is fast food, in my opinion. So yeah. thank you so much. I am so glad that we had the opportunity to really have you, who is the master chef at the Body Ecology Diet, show us how easy it is and demystify all of it for us. So this has been a golden opportunity. Thank you so much thank for your time. Thank you, Lisa. I'm very grateful because this is something we said we're going to do for a long time. We've Good. finally done it. We did it. It will help a lot of people. All thank right. You. <laughs> thank you. Thank you so much. And I really hope that you've learned as much as I have and that you understand how easy it is to eat for your health. Until next time, I always invite you to stay aware.